for each of the male champions described in the Bible, there were also several women who were unnamed as part of the picture. It is the unnamed women that had some of the profound impact on Christians. These unnamed women are many, but I will mention a few. The Canaanite woman in Matthew chapter 15 and Mark chapter 7, sometimes referred to as the Syrophoenician woman, she begged Jesus to drive out evil spirit that possessed her daughter. In his conversation with the woman, Jesus had a notable exchange with her about whether his miracles were only for his own people, the Jews, but the persistent faith of the woman meant that when she got home, she found her daughter lying in bed with the demon gone out of her. Then we move on to the woman at the well, which is in John chapter 4. Of course, Jesus had an amazing encounter with that woman, who of course is not named. And then finally, the woman caught in adultery. Of course, her name is not mentioned. Now, there are two stages in our reading uh, tonight. First of the stage is the accusations of the Jewish leaders. And second is Jesus' response to the woman and by extension to all of us. So let's look at the first accusations then. In an effort to trap Jesus, the Jewish leaders had actually twisted the law of Moses and had possibly staged this particular event. To begin with, their actions are illegal. This woman should have been taken to the court. Those accusers were accomplices. But instead of passing judgment on the woman, Jesus passed judgment on her accusers. Jesus answered, disarmed, them because he still spoke about throwing stones to the woman. He could not have been accused of disregarding the law because of course in the law of Moses they are told people should throw stone against such a person and probably should be, should be stoned to death. So Jesus said well of all of you the one without sin should cast the first stone. So he actually prevented them from taking the law into their own hands. Let's look at Jesus' response to the accusers. Jesus' response to the woman reflects his merciful purpose to forgive sin and restore people to the right relationship to God. He does not condemn the woman as if she is unfit for forgiveness, but treat her with kindness and patience in order to lead her to repent. If she responds to Jesus' challenge, she can receive spiritual salvation despite her past. We shouldn't take this to suggest that Jesus looked casually on sin or the sin of adultery and the heartbreak that it caused both adults and children who are caught up in it. What Jesus offers this woman is an opportunity for salvation and a way out of her sinful nature. She will only escape God's judgment if she turns completely from her old ways and begin to live as part of God's kingdom principles. So then, when others are caught in sin, are we quick to judge or throw the first stone? To do so is to act as though we have never sinned. It is God's role to judge, and it is our role to show forgiveness and compassion. When Jesus said only those without sin should throw the stone, the leaders slipped away quietly, beginning from the oldest to the youngest. The older men were more aware of their sin than the younger folk. So whatever your age, take an honest look at your life. Recognize your sinful nature. Look for ways to help others rather than hurt them. Jesus did not condemn the woman accused of adultery, but neither did he ignore 
nor condone her sin. He told her to live her life of sin and Jesus stands ready to forgive any sin in our lives. But confession and repentance means a change of heart and with God's help, we can accept Christ's forgiveness and stop our wrongdoing. Let us pray.